Disclaimer: The narrator of the story has a rare disease that stops him from being able to pronounce names of the protagonist in stories in which they are given to correctly. In a poor village of no more than a few hundred Athenians, lived a girl of grandeur, a girl destined to be something more than her dwellings. She was sheltered in this modern city of warriors and merchants, unaware of the rampant sexism in her empire. She trained to hold her own in battle, but that wasn't enough for her, for she was a keen and gifted learner who wanted to enrich herself in fighting styles from all over the world and the empire. It was rumored that Melanthea possessed an otherworldly quality aside from her devastatingly ravishing olive-skinned face and silhouette, of course. She believed she had the powers to bend water and heat, for Melanthea was undoubtedly determined to be different, at times to a fault. Do you mind fetching me some water, Nigel? Of course! Round them up and take them back to the lab at once. Who are you? Where are you taking these citizens of Athens? They're unnatural, Melantha. Have you not seen their tattoos? It's not right to have a symbol of allegiance to a goddess aside from our patron. Something prickled on Melanthia's neck at that comment. I've been ordered to take them to a place where they'll be monitored very closely. Melanthia was dizzy with confusion. While Athena was the patron goddess of Athens, there had never been such strict rules in the past. Here's your water. Oh my, Miss Melantha, you look sick. Are you all right? Oh yes, I just think I need to go take a bath. As Melantha took her bath, she realized how horrible it was to be imprisoned just for having a tattoo. She thought about how unfair it were to the people and how scared they might have been in that situation. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm a fugitive. I've never been anything more except for a law-abiding citizen of Athens. to do. I must get those innocent and probably equally shocked prisoners out! You know, for government officials, they certainly aren't the best at covering up their chariot tracks. But I guess it kind of helped that I am a warrior and a hunter. But the crescent laying on her collar left annoying feeling throughout the journey. It was upon arriving at the labs at dusk that the explanation dawned on her. She had never known her parents. For she had always been a child of the city as far as she knew. But now she suspected that her abilities could be traced to a possible parent of the moon, Artemis. In which case she could inherit the powers of the moon and the tide to save her possible siblings with her tattoo. Crawling with guards. I gotta hop this. I did it. Whew, that was lucky. Melantha rushes to another door and puts her ear on the door to hear a beeping sound. Uh, they'll probably let me go. I'm Melantha, protector and role model to the city. No, stop! Ah! Melantha frantically tried to free the prisoners of the tattoos and managed to only let out one. Before she was shot. You did this, you monster! She destroyed all of 
our hard work. What have you done? We didn't need you. Our poor little Melanthia falls to the ground with exhaustion. <clears throat> uh, reading from the script here, it says, You go, girl. Uh, I need a nap from just watching you. You know, that's actually really true. We'll have to take her into custody, Dr. Teos. May I even ask who this is, officer? No. <gasps> he killed our best scientist working on a cure for Mooney disease. All we know is that to do what she did to that scientist, she had to possess something unnatural. She's been in a coma for a while now. She should wake up anytime soon. Warning, if you show any signs of overconfidence or cockiness, like Melantha herself, um, you may be prone to symptoms of explosion and comas. So concludes our story of Melanthia. Thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashian Way. <laughs> Da 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 da